We are wanderers, explorers, travelers, roaming the earth field by field, moment by moment, seeking, searching, longing, desperately wanting those we encounter to know what we know, to experience what we've experienced. A life change so beautiful, a grace so sufficient, a mercy so unfathomable that we can't possibly keep it to ourselves. This is our mission. This is our purpose pursue the calling of Jesus to the ends of the earth. Will you answer that call? The call to wander? The call to search? The call to walk? The field? I was asked to open the service this morning. I'd like to thank all you folks for coming out. Thank you for taking time. I worship the Lord. It's a blessing to be able to gather, isn't it? Amen. Still got the freedom to hold up your Bible, speak up. The harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. God loves a volunteer. Any volunteers here this morning? Raise your hand. Okay, all seven of us. Beautiful. All right, well, let's pray and open it up. Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for the freedoms that we do still have in this country that we can gather around your word, gather with believers. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would come now and fill this entire auditorium. Speak to our hearts, be our teacher, be our guide. I pray you'd give every one of us, Lord, ears to hear with, a mind to understand and a heart to apply your word to, that we could go out of here, laborers in your field. And Lord, I pray you'd bless us with opportunities to share your gospel and to share what you've done in our lives. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this church. Thank you for each one that came out this morning. I pray you'd bless each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand and sing this morning. We're going to sing promises.
miners and carpenters, right? <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome. I said, we're going to have a, oh, is it open echo? Okay, I guess not. So we're going to have a special Sunday. It's going to be on the 23rd, right? It's going to be a very busy Sunday, lots of things going on. And here's some of the things going on. We're going to have a, during the service here, we're going to have a special emphasis on the Sunday school time, what it means to be Sunday school, all that. That's what we're going to talk about on Sunday the 23rd. But beyond that, we're going to try to stay for Sunday school afterwards. So this is the time you can invite your friends, invite your neighbors. 10-23 is going to be a day that we can invite everyone to Sunday school, okay? So we have a couple weeks, start inviting people there. It's also the day of our quarterly business meeting. Now, we've had 200 great years, lots of things going on. We had the great celebration anniversary, but now we need to start planning for the next 200 years. So we want all the church members, especially voting members, to be here for that October 23rd for the special business meeting. Now, unrelated, there's also a wedding going on that day. Merle, are you doing a wedding that day, later on in the afternoon? So very busy day here at the church. But we're excited about that because that shows that uh, things are going on, that life is happening here at Yates Baptist Church. Um, a couple other things just to announce, we st even though we're having a Sunday school uh, emphasis, we still do need a couple more Sunday school teachers. If you would be interested in teaching maybe junior high or maybe some of the uh, minor and Atwater boys <laughs> or others, I said if you're interested in that, uh, please come see me. I will say this too, Callie has stepped up and Callie's going to, starting next week, be teaching the primary class, so that'll be the first, second, third grader certainly not so Callie's gonna be doing that starting next week as well but I'm excited to see all you guys and Beth I think it's your turn yeah it's that time of year again so you're gonna see a little bit more of me however I have a couple trips so maybe not as much um, uh, Operation Christmas Child deadline is coming up faster than I would like it to come up um, uh, November 14th is the deadline to bring everything in and then we usually do a lot of packing that week and everything gets dropped off so um, it's coming really, really fast. I want to thank the trustees for bringing all my stuff back upstairs out of the shed, and I made inventory of everything I have. Oops. Oh, my gosh. Which is a lot. I mean, considering we're doing 1,000 boxes, at least that's my goal. Maybe 1,001. It was over last year. I don't know. But uh, we have right now, like, 83 coloring books, which means we need, like, 917 more of them. We have more crayons, we have 635 crayons, so we only need 365 of those. So um, we have, the only thing we have enough of right now is pencils, okay? So I will be packing up bags for people to take home uh, until then. I am making a trip to see my grandson on the 13th, so which means I have to quarantine a little bit before that, before I go, so. Um, I'll be out of commission for a while, so I'm trying to get a lot done right now. I have tax exempt on some stuff, which I, it's hard to get on a lot of it, so I'm trying to cut costs. Uh, Lynn helped make a, a nice article in here, has a lot of information. This year, uh, Samaritan's Purse has come out with a new thing. The papers are over here on the table. If you want to pack a box for your fit with your family, take as many as you want. You can fill out the information on here, and then it has a place for you to put your address on the back and send it in your box. And then they can possibly write back to you. I mean, we did that with our kids for all the years that they packed with us. And if you start to do a family thing, I know my kids kept doing it until they were in college. So hopefully they'll start again at some point I don't know but anyhow um, this is new pick up those put them in your boxes pack at home if you want if you want to know what th we're short on I can tell you exactly how many of everything we need so pray about it any way that you can help I believe I'm believing in big things this year <laughs> so um, a thousand boxes is a, a big thing and that means a thousand souls plus for Christ and that's my desire thing family night this week any special emphasis Genoa this week sunglasses all right so bring your shades all right uh, thank many thanks to Genoa for helping with family night prayer and share will be right around 6 30 ish okay so those that are on the prayer team keep that in mind as well look over your announcement page carefully you don't want to gobble up a lot of time with 
uh, endless announcements here, but they're in print. Many thanks to Lynn for very nice newsletter for October. We appreciate that. Okay. Let's turn to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Psalm 37 is often called the fret not psalm. You'll see why. <laughs> Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen? You may be seated. I believe it's time for the choir. I have a little song to my mind with me. It's called Communion. For through him, we both have access to one spirit to the Father, and that's Ephesians 2.18. I can remember the exact moment when I realized there was something different about my grandfather. I was in elementary school, and one of the teachers put her hand on my shoulder and told another teacher, this is Billy Graham's son. I wondered, how on earth did she know my grandfather? You see, we, my brothers, sisters, and I were raised in the mountains of North Carolina, a world away from the large audiences that would gather to hear my grandfather's message. We were good kids. We would get into mischief, but were mostly harmless. One Sunday morning, when I was nearly six years old, I sat next to my parents in a pew at church. I noticed they were passing out a snack, and everybody was getting a bite. I couldn't be sure, but it looked like it might be a bit of bread and a cup of grape juice. I was excited, I was hungry, and I wanted a snack. As the tray of bread came by, I reached out to take a piece. Suddenly my dad reached up and smacked the back of my head. Not hard enough to hurt, but enough that I understood the message and let the plate pass. I couldn't figure it out. I had been good all service there, which isn't necessarily easy for a young boy who's used to running around the mountainside. I could only assume that my parents were afraid I would spill on the church coat. <laughs> That afternoon, my dad took me up to my room and began to explain to me what communion is. He shared that it's a time of remembrance for those who have accepted Jesus as Savior. He told me about what Jesus did for me on the cross. He explained how Jesus died for my sins and that I could spend eternity with him in heaven. That was the day my dad used communion to explain the gospel, and I surrendered my life to Jesus. I didn't have all the answers. I didn't understand the whole Bible, but I did know a few things. I knew that I had sinned. I knew that Jesus took my sins to the cross. I knew that he conquered the grave, and I knew that he wanted a relationship with him as my Savior. You see, the fact that I was a good kid and that my last name was Green didn't mean anything in the scope of eternity. Being Billy Green's grandson and sitting still in church on Sunday morning was not enough to gain entrance in time. Similarly, you may be the pastor's son or daughter. You may be a deacon, Sunday school superintendent, but your family lineage and good works cannot save you either. Rather, the decision I made that day with childlike faith was what secured my eternity with it's that moment of surrender that allowed me a lifetime of joy, peace, and purpose in this world and the hope of salvation when my days for here are done. Jesus can and will save you as you seek him, seek forgiveness, and begin a relationship with him. Can you remember a time when you surrendered your life to Jesus? If the answer is no, what is holding you back from doing?
The ushers could work their way to the front. We'll wait upon you for the morning offering at this time. Thank you, choir. I was just sharing, I think, with Jackie this morning, if we don't have a platform big enough for the choir, that's a nice problem to have. <laughs> Amen. And so, uh, so thankful to have the Farwell family. Uh, anytime the Farwells come, half our church is filled right up. It's a wonder we don't have to dust the balcony off a little more. Maybe someday we will. Amen. John, would you offer the blessing on the offering? Dear Lord, we just uh, thank you for this building that we could come and worship you in today. And we ask you to bless each gift and giver. Mm. And, uh, these tithes and offerings would go out to further your kingdom, Lord. Thank, thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
We thank you for the Farwell family. We thank you for all the folks here, Lord, but especially we lift up Joe. Lord, we thank you for the safety you've given him and the recovery that you're taking him through, Lord. Lord, and I thank you for our brothers in our church who have, have had close calls, close brushes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your hand of protection on us every day. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for bringing this group of people together today, Lord, and through it all, in spite of it all, in spite of the hardships and, and downturns in life, Lord, we thank you for your salvation. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Lord, help us not to fear, not to regret, not to, not to regret, not to be bitter about things that happen to us and the hardship and the shortcomings that we have, Lord. We thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord. I lift up this congregation today, Lord. Encourage us, help us to focus on the salvation that you offer. In spite of the hardships of life, Lord, you keep us up. The glory that you have for us, Lord. Pity Satan, Jesus. Dick and Colleen Smith in your prayers. Uh, Colleen has come down with COVID and Dick is coming off it and so we miss them. Ken and Kathy Ball, very special needs there with them as uh, they struggle with weakness and what God has in store. Joe, it is good to have you here, brother. <laughs> and uh, I think it's 
nice when we can offer special prayer for specific people. Thanks, Levi. I love to hear praying from the heart. And uh, that must mean a lot to God when we really mean what we say and pray from our hearts. And uh, Joe, there's still work to do. Maybe uh, any more uh, flying miles? Uh, not yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, which commercial airline was it you were <laughs> checking into? <laughs> so good to have you here in your family. I'd like to have us turn into our Bibles to Psalm 19 today. Psalm 19. Building some healthy desires. I'm sure this psalm is familiar to you. I'd like to take a moment and share it and then make some comments on it, okay? Psalm 19, beginning with verse 1. David wrote, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Father, as we look at this psalm now, just open up our eyes, and may we hear and know and understand the things you've so freely given to us. Thank you for the blessed Holy Spirit, the divine illuminator who can help us really see, and he can help us really listen. He can enable us to obey and to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Help Ken and Kathy, help Dick and Colleen, help Bernie Froman. Father, so many others we know, some we're aware of, some we might not be aware of. COVID is still in our midst, but I'm so thankful so is Jesus. And so guide our steps and help us, Lord, to grasp the meaning of this psalm, its significance, and how we can apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> On your guide sheet, I would turn your attention to that just a moment. At the very top, I've given a couple verses from the Proverbs. Proverbs 10, 24, the desire of the righteous shall be granted. And then in Proverbs eleven twenty three, 23, the desire of the righteous is only good. Who do you believe puts those desires within our hearts, you see? This is the whole thing. But in our psalm, verses 1 to 6, we see how God has revealed himself 
God could keep everything concealed and secret. But no, he has decided to reveal himself to us. God can be known. He's not far off from any one of us. And yet we see in verses 1 to 6 uh, the work of creation. And by the way, as we examine the work of creation, we see an answer to the question, are the heathen, those who have never heard the gospel, are they really lost? The answer is yes. Yes, they are. They're lost without Christ. What's the problem here? The problem is not so much that they've rejected Christ, but they've rejected the light that they already have. Okay? And the work of creation, God has placed his signature on everything we look at. The skies, the heavens, the green earth, the seas, the oceans. <laughs> it's as if God puts his signature there and says, I did that. I did that. First, what are some of these healthy desires the psalmist sets forth? First of all, there's the healthy desire in our hearts to praise God. I don't know if there's any better place to worship than outdoors. I, I praise God for this facility. I love a church that looks like a church. Of course, I, I use funny words. The church is us. <laughs> but this is only this is where the church meets right here. But I thank God for a facility like this because it makes me think of worship when I step into this place. But when I'm outdoors and can see the green grass and the trees, the beauty of the sun, the moon, the stars at night, my, how it motivates me to praise God for this amazing work of beauty and design. My main argument in supporting creation over evolution is this. There's design out there that necessitates a designer. If it were just at random and looked like a whole big realm of mess and disorder and chaos, that'd be one thing. But there's amazing, intricate design. One scientist even called it irreducible complexity. <laughs> From the sun, the moon, the stars to... Insects, flowers, everything, beautiful color, fragrance, design. It's all designed by God. Revelation 4.11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. That's kind of a song in heaven there in the book of the Revelation. That's what's going to be sung. That'll be the real theme of our worship. Lord, you're worthy. You are worthy. That's the heartbeat of worship because wor worship is worthship. <laughs> God is worthy. And how we can emphasize that. I'm also glad to announce that the sun reveals the power of the sun. You notice the difference in spelling? <laughs> the sun. My. What, so much that could be said about that. I sure am glad the Lord put the sun. What is it? Uh, is it 93 million? Is that right? Okay. I, it's been a while since I had a study of the sun. <laughs> but if that sun were any farther away, we might freeze to death. If it were any closer, we'd be barbecued. Okay, and so really the earth is right where it belongs to support life. Guess who put all that together? Not Mr. Big Bang, but our big God put it all together here. A healthy desire we have in our hearts to praise God. Secondly, we have a healthy desire to prize God's own word. Some have called God, verses 1 to 6, God's general revelation through nature and the work of creation. Verses 7 to 12, we see God's special revelation through his 
written word. I like Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2, where Malachi says, Unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Malachi 4.2 We have a healthy desire to prize God's own word. Oh, there's so much here. Uh, verses 7 to 9, it's amazing how many different expressions there is of Scripture here. In fact, this is kind of a, uh, in a sense, kind of a lovely little prelude, Brother Joe, to Psalm 119. So you've got Psalm 19, and you've got Psalm 119, and you really couldn't get better information about God's Word and its value than those two Psalms here. We should desire God's word far above money and earthly riches. And in our materialistic culture, that says a little bit. Money is a necessary resource. Amen? Okay. Uh, wella, wella, wella. <laughs> doesn't say money's the root of all evil. What does it say? Love of money is the root of all evil. Money's necessary, but money is not as important as God, and, and God is the one who is eternal. He's the one that will last. Money can be with us one moment, <laughs> absolutely gone the next. Those that put their faith and trust in Wall Street are in for big disappointment. <laughs> Okay, with us, one where your portfolio can look pretty impressive one day, and then the next day it will help your prayer life, okay? We should desire the sweet richness of His Word. The Word of God is sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. How do you feel about your Bible, about God's Word? Do you see it as far more valuable than what money can buy? Is his word a sense of richness to your soul, sweeter than honey? What beautiful expressions here. Psalm 119, 103, David wrote, How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Beautifully worded here. Are you ready to praise God or are you ready to prize his word? Thirdly, we see there is the healthy desire to pray to God for a clean heart. It's amazing that this stuff comes following quite a description of God's Word here. It's the Word of God that keeps us clean. Okay? It's the Word of God that keeps us clean. There is amazing advantages with the Word of God. We are warned in Scripture, are we not? I look at various verses in the Bible, it reminds me of a, a bright caution light. Be careful here. Watch out. Be on the alert. Satan walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Put on the whole armor of God that you might stand against the wiles of the devil. We could go on and on and on with this, but there's a lot of warning issued in Scripture. As sheep, let's never forget that without the shepherd, we're absolutely helpless. We are absolutely dependent on the shepherd in order to find our way home. And we need to understand that. David prayed to be cleared of sins of ignorance. Lord, cleanse me of secret or hidden faults. These are things in our life we might not even be conscious of. Think of that for a moment. There's two basic ways that I sin against God. Number one, sins of commission where I do what is wrong. Okay? The Bible says it's wrong. I, I sometimes do that, even though it's wrong. Do you find yourself doing that as a Christian? You know in your heart and in your conscience it's wrong, but you do it anyhow. We've all been guilty of that, I'm sure. Secret, hidden faults, things I might not be aware of, 
but I also sin against God by failing to do what I ought to do and failing to do what is right. They call that sins of omission. Okay? Sins of omission. Sins I'm not even aware of and deep in my heart. And David also prayed that he could be kept back from the dominion of willful sin. He talks about, how do you like that word presumptuous? <laughs> That's what it says here in verse 13. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. What's this? It means sins I am aware of and are conscious of. In fact, the word presumptuous even means deliberate sin and rebellion. And we sometimes are guilty of these things. Seeking God's cleansing. We have a healthy desire to pray to God. Do you realize how honored we are to be able to pray? My, to step into God's throne room and tell Him what's on our heart? When's the last time you had a good chat with God? God isn't dead. Didn't we talk to Him this morning? Some of you are going like this, and some of you... <laughs> Did you? Did you talk to God this morning? Do you think He's waiting for us to join Him? And sometimes when I don't show up, well, Lyle, I was... They're waiting for you all morning long, and where were you? <laughs> Something to think about. We have a healthy desire to pray to God for a clean heart. And finally here, some of these thoughts I present to you. There's the healthy desire to please God in every area of our lives. Notice verse 14. Let the words of my mouth, this was David's heart's prayer, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, may, may it be well pleasing to you, O Lord my strength, my redeemer. What about the words that we say and how we say them? That's, I've emphasized the word how there. <laughs> you realize we can say something that's okay and good, but yet not say it in the right manner? It's something to think about. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Colossians 4, 6. Our words, what we say to one another, should be words of grace and kindness, gentleness. Why? Because that's the way Jesus spoke. I was reading in John 12 this morning about Mary of Bethany, how she grabbed that expensive ointment, that perfume, if we want to use that word, and poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. What a tremendous portrait of devotion to Christ. And so aware that his life would come to an end here on earth. She's prepared this for my own burial, Jesus said. Leave her alone. The disciples were really getting on her nerves. <laughs> Why? Leave her alone, Jesus said. She's done a good work. Mary of Bethany. Jesus spoke words of gentleness and kindness. How about the settled thoughts of our hearts? Lord, may the very meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Psalm 1, verse 2, The godly man doesn't walk in the way of sinners and sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, what's it say? He meditates day and night. I could ask you this morning, do you really love God? Is He your heavenly Father? Do you love His Word? 
There's no such thing as someone who says, I love God and hates his word and leaves and neglects their Bible. It's no way. If you love God, you'll love his word. And if you love God, you'll love his people. You mean that person I sit next to in church? Yeah. <laughs> we'll love his people. How about the settled thoughts of our hearts? Psalm 119, verse 97. David sang out, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. I don't know about you today, but this is rather convicting to me personally. My meditation on God's word all day long. It's quite a standard, isn't it? The Lord himself is our rock and our redeemer. That word strength in the King James could also be looked upon in the Hebrew as the Lord is our rock. He is our redeemer. Not only is he our strength, but we are bought with a price. Amen? We sang about are you washed in the blood this morning? There is that shed blood that, that paid the debt. We've been bought with a price. We are not our own, Paul wrote. We are not our own. We do not have the freedom to do as we please and the freedom to come and go at will necessarily, but we are free now to serve our new master. We're under new ownership. <laughs> I've stated this before. I don't know if it can be emphasized enough, especially in a country, a culture, where everybody's looking out for number one. A strong emphasis on individualism, uh, truth, what is truth. Uh, there, there's so, much, so many snares and landmines out there. We've got to be careful how we walk, how we journey. Psalm 42, 1, we sang as the deer, amen, this morning. <laughs> Here's where it's from. Psalm 42, 1, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Is God himself your key and chief desire? Is his word something you hunger and thirst for? Lord knows how we enjoy a good hot meal. <laughs> well, these bodies need a little satisfying now and again too, don't they? But how much do we really hunger and thirst for his word? When we arise in the morning, <laughs> what about our day? Do we seek him, seek his word, spend time in prayer? At this time in our service, those who are going to be suffering... <laughs> Offering. <laughs> oh, well, I know they suffer, but they're going to offer. Uh, <laughs> guys, hang in there with me. <laughs> suffer listening to the preacher every Sunday. I'm not sure. But anyways, they're here to offer the communion elements. It amazes me how Jesus deliberately placed himself under his Father's authority. We need to understand this. The Son of God, Christ, became the Son of Man. And in becoming man and a human being, he placed himself under the Father's care and, the, and the, by the power of the Holy Spirit was enabled to do things that revealed who he really was, God in the flesh, amen? It's the way it is. But Jesus' desire was to do the will of God without fail. I was looking at Hebrews, and, and in Hebrews it tells us that Jesus Christ came to do the will of God. What was God's will? God's will was for Jesus to take our sins upon himself upon the cross. God's will involved, there's that word suffering. And yet, 
Jesus' life became an offering, okay? Janet, thank you for sharing what you did this morning. I think that was laid out very simply, very clearly. I can't add on to that. I think it says everything. We're here to remember Him. If you're like me, you're prone to forget. <laughs> and many times we forget things that really matter. We get caught up in the world's commotion and hurry, hurry, and scurry. Busy. We're busy. The question is, are we busy doing God's will? Are we busy serving the Lord? Are we busy sharing Christ with others? These are the things that matter most. Are we busy in His Word? Are we busy in our prayer life? When I pray for others, I'm amazed how many people the Lord can put on your heart to pray for. When I hear of people spending hours in prayer, I'm beginning to know what they're talking about beginning to know. I can't confess that I spend three or four hours a day in prayer, but my prayer life isn't just when I sit down with an open Bible and say something out loud. It's all day long. God's putting someone on my mind when I'm out taking a walk, when I'm driving the car with my eyes open and pray. <laughs> God's putting people on my heart, and I pray as He does that. And that's that's my priestly responsibility, but we all have a priestly responsibility to pray for one another that we may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Jesus' desire was to do the will of God, even if it meant the cross. Oh, oh how tempted he was to go some other way. We often overlook this. The time in the garden was a time of terrific stress and suffering. In fact, it got to a point, as Jesus prayed, the Bible says an angel of the Lord came to strengthen him. But his prayer was very straightforward. Not my will. But what? But thine be done. Period. He did all that for you and me. Took our place. And by His broken body and shed blood, we now stand before Him whole. <laughs> whole. Is it okay if I use this, Bill? Merle, would you offer the blessing on the broken bread this morning? <clears throat> Father, as we come into your presence, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this opportunity. And we think about your word this morning, Lord, and how we know and understand that you were wounded for our transgressions. Let us think about that. Without you, Lord, we have no hope. You are bruised for our iniquities. But we thank God by your stripes we are healed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this opportunity to reflect on what you did for us and uh, how we should be living our lives daily. I pray that you would give us the strength each and every day, Lord, to put you on display, to tell those that are living in sin to tell those that have turned their back on you, to be used as a testimony for you, Lord, for not only did you reconcile us to you, but you've given us the ministry of reconciliation. Give us the strength to do it. I pray that you would bless this time together as we partake and we reflect on what you did for us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. that we can be washed whiter than snow. That's pretty white. <laughs> A heart filled with sin can be cleansed, made new, and praise God for new life in Christ. Just very briefly, I've stated before that if we're going to live, sin is a, is a deadly thing. We have to have a proper view of sin in order to appreciate the Savior. Many times they talk about a Savior and the love of Jesus, but they don't really deal with sin. Uh, we've been saved from sin on one hand, and yet we still struggle with it. <laughs> we do wrong. We fail to do what is right, and we need His help. If we are to be cured of this horrible, deadly thing that's covered the whole globe. We need Jesus' blood to live. He's the divine donor, and uh, it's the right blood type <laughs> for us. Amen? And if you've never received Jesus, uh, uh, you can do that right now. You can do that in the quietness of your own place in the pew. We could have you come forward to do so. But that's not a requirement to become a Christian. But we would say, this is the day of opportunity. If you're not sure you're a Christian, and you're not sure you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, be your Savior, He will do so if you ask Him and talk to Him. Say, I'm a sinner, Lord. I need Jesus as my Savior. And if you know Him, then the Lord's Supper takes on a whole new meaning because we realize that with all that suffering and the terrible scene of Calvary, that he went through all that suffering and torture for you and for me. And we gather to worship and remember him for what he did. Bill, would you offer the blessing? Oh, it has a red light. Father, we thank you. We thank you for everything you gave up to come save us. We know that blood is life, physical life, but your blood was shed for our, our eternal life. We thank you so much that you were willing to go through all the hurt and the pain from the beginning of your life on earth until the day you, you were raised on the cross. We thank you, though, for the victory over death through your resurrection, and you promised that we can be resurrected with you. We give you the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's turn into our hymnals to hymn 478. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. Have you any room for Jesus?
anyone here today that's never made that critical decision for Christ. We pray to do so before they leave. Right now. Quietness in their hearts. Thank you for meeting with us. Giving us the word of truth. May we go to love and serve you. And to share Jesus freely. And boldly with others. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen.